I've never seen square nipples before though. <laughs> Welcome to Hook Shots. You know, the coast of Raritan Bay in North Jersey isn't exactly where people go to the Jersey Shore to vacation. It's not all ski ball and funnel cake. It's kind of a little more rough around the edges. But, you know, it's got its own special character that I really like. And it's a good thing I really dig it because it's where I start my charter season every year. See, Raritan Bay is the first place in North Jersey where a huge body of stripers is gonna show up. That's because these fish have to go through the Raritan Bay to get up the Hudson and Raritan Rivers to spawn. You know, we're fishing in the shadows of Staten Island and New York City. It's urban angling. And the reason I get to open the show is because for one month in the spring, this is my turf. It might be gritty and it might be combat fishing, but it's just so good. So when the bite got insane, I called JC and said, get up here with the cameras, dude. Is this the early spring home of Captain Eric Kerber? Now for sure, we like to get out and about all over the country and check out all different kinds of fisheries, but you also have to be smart enough to know when you need to just stay home. And when Kerb sends you video that looks like this on a Sunday, we rise, we fall, we and then happens to let you know that he doesn't have any charters on Monday, we put the pieces together. So the next morning, JC and my cousin Brian show up to see if we could recreate the magic of the day before. Of course, we get up there and it's blowing and it's gonna be snotty and wet and cold, but I'm pretty confident that we're gonna find that bike. But sometimes finding them, even though you left them somewhere yesterday, is not so automatic. The trick to this game is finding where they've schooled up. And once you find that big school, it's usually game on. So the smart thing to do is put a couple of trolling rods out with some hard baits on them. I, I hate trolling, but it covers ground. And we didn't have that trolling gear out for more than five minutes when one of those rods knocked down. It was just a little schooly, but it was a sign that there was gonna be fish in that area. You know, and we let that fish go and we dropped lines again, and literally within minutes of putting those trolling lines out again, we took a look to the north. And just gannets getting tight. And for you non-salty guys, gannets are good. Now we couldn't get that trolling gear out of the water fast enough, and we slid up to where the birds were working just on the outside, and Kerber goes, oh my God, look at the screen. Holy <laughs> sh**, Mark. Oh my God. JC drops the shad, hits the bottom, fish on. Oh! <laughs> Brian drops his, fish on. Oh, you know, we put that fish in the boat, it was probably just over the 20 pound mark, and I was like, I will take that for my first salty striper of 2016. Saw the gannets going, one drop, the screen is stacked. I mean, it was it was the definition of drop and reel fishing. You know, these weren't little schooly fish. These were 20 pound class bass. Now, you know, in the early spring, that water is very, very cold. And a lot of times, the stripers are very, very sluggish because of that. That's why the two main deals in Raritan Bay early on are typically chunking and trolling. This type of bite doesn't normally happen in April. These bass would get so fired up that they would have four friends coming with them, and you could pitch a shad and boom, hit them, get them right next to the boat. Which, to be perfectly honest, is a hell of a lot more fun than sitting there and watching chunk rods, and definitely a lot more fun than trolling. <laughs> fun just doesn't stop. Yeah! It really doesn't get any better than doubles and triples. Oh, son! Yeah. Oh, tripled up! Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you know, and one of the really cool things we were seeing out there was a different size class of fish. Somebody would bring in a 24, 26 incher, and then the next cast, somebody would hook into a 20 pounder. And what that is are your small males and your big females full of eggs all staging to spawn. So <laughs> These are the fish that are creating our next generation of fish. And frankly, I wouldn't mind seeing in the early spring, Raritan Bay be a catch and release only fishery. Oh, dude, yeah, hell yeah. 
told you it was a good one. You know, and we had caught so many fish that afternoon that it got to a point where it's like, all right, I think it's beer 30. And we absolutely just left them out there biting. However, because we left them out there chewing and I knew Kerber didn't have any clients the next day, got me thinking. Hey, what's up everybody? EK here again. You got any old crusty, beat up swim shads lying around? Or better yet, a few that some toothy critters have taken care of? Well, don't throw them in the garbage. Take the jig heads out and repurpose them. There's not a million things to do with them, but here's a couple ideas. Shad heads have a foot. They let them sit flat on the bottom like a shaky head. If you're an inshore flounder guy like me, add a gulp or soft plastic and you got a wicked bottom bouncing presentation. You can also cut the foot off and make a real nice jig head for unrigged soft plastics. The inline upturned eye will give the baits a nice jigging action and that little bit of extra weight will keep it just under the surface. It looks just as dandy as a banjo minnow. Now this is another scenario that I think every angler can identify with. You had such a good day doing one thing. You caught so many fish and you know that they're out there that the next time out, it's like, let's go out and see what other kind of crap they're gonna eat. And of course with JC involved, that usually means fly rod. And even though by the book it's completely the wrong time of year to do it, I said, you know what, they were eating those shads so good, I bet you I can get one to eat a fly. So round two became Mission Whipstick. You know, the funny thing with these spring bites is you can be on it, on it, on it, on it, and it can change overnight. So we get out and get right back to the spot where they were stacked, and there's nothing. There was no bird play whatsoever, not a gannet to be seen. You know, and my heart's just breaking, right? Because I'm looking at my fly rod sitting there ready to go, and I'm thinking, damn it, I am not gonna get to use this today, am I? Early in the day on the way to the good spot, we did run over one little pile of fish. You know, and in the afternoon, after searching around a lot of area, we decided to go back and check that out. Oh, I'm in! Oh, I'm on! Oh, baby! We found them! Yeah! You know, and I've learned to be patient because it doesn't take much of maybe a tide change or a wind switch to get things back going. Okay. Now where's that whole giant pile of you that was out here yesterday? And then just like that, the breeze kicked up a little bit and we went right back to one of the marks we were on the day before, and there they were. Oh, buddy. Yeah, guess when it seems all hope is lost. And sure enough, he go, oh, I got a bump. And then next thing you know, he's on. Not the monsters that we had yesterday, but to take stripers hitting that hard on the fly in April is awesome. So I'm over there casting my shad and going, okay, yep, yep, mm, that was freak occurrence. And next thing you know, got him. Oh, nuts! Number two? Number two! So that's when Curbs was finally like, all right, give me the long rod. Now, Curbs can cast a fly. I have seen it with my own eyes. What Curbs has never cast before is a 30 foot, 350 grain sink tip. Now, I couldn't make this up if I tried. The second we put that fly rod in his hands, that wind came up about another 15 knots. I was getting a little frustrated, which happens with me and the fly rod sometimes, so I kind of gave it up for a little. So we pull up, make another drift. JC's about five casts in, and next thing you know, he's in backing and can't stop this fish. Yeah, this one has a some more weight. This fish will not let me bring it up. It's just dogging right here. And finally, we saw color and it rolled over and we both went, oh, oh, nice, oh fish. nice fish, nice dude. Nice dude. All right. Come on, Eric. Yeah, dude! <laughs> Hell yeah! You go from dink to dink to dink and then whack. That is one of my biggest stripers on the fly ever. Yeah. Now I'm just determined. I'm like, I got to get one on the fly. Give me the thing. Let me do it. Let me do my thing. Oh, he got it right there, didn't he? Come on now! So e says this camera is cursing him uh, into catching a fish on the fly, so I'm just going to go lay down up front and uh, collect my thoughts and not film. But he forgot about the GoPro on the dash. I knew you could do it. Got one. Just had to put that camera away, that's all. It may not have been the biggest bass out of Raritan Bay, but it was on the fly in April and awesome. You know, so to have those two days with Eric just totally scratched that rare and bay itch for me, and I can go to bed happy knowing that I got my piece of that action. You know, this couldn't have been more of the classic, it's on now, get here, and go. And you know, when you have a bite like this, a lot of times it's worth it 
to take a sick day, burn a vacation day, call out, you're sick, fake puke, do something. But when it's on, get out and get on it. See, you got your rubbers. There is a burning boy. Just pounding the snot out of these flies. Curbs, you gotta get down on this, bro. Something you can't avoid. This looks like my kind of place. Destiny.